Okay, everyone. So today we're going to have a, this tutorial is going to cover uh, a couple of different brain models. Uh, one of which is going to deal with the external anatomy. We'll make a nice mid sagittal cut with this model and look at the mid sagittal cut of this model. Uh, to look at some major structures that you will be responsible for knowing. Uh, I like this model because it is a pretty good representation uh, and have some nice key features that need to be identified. Uh, we can start with some general structures. Anytime we have a bump on the brain, this is going to be called a gyrus. So we have a gyri right here, gyri right here, gyri right here, gyri right here. Any shallow depression is going to be called a sulcus. Okay, so we have a sulci, 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 sulci. We will identify uh, one major sulcus that we need to know, and it is our central sulcus. It's what separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe with each right and left hemisphere. And we're going to identify the key uh, bumps or gyri that are important uh, for some um, somatosensory and primary motor integration here. So again, let's start with some basic terminology. Our lobes of our brain, we have our frontal lobe, we have our parietal lobe, on the side, we have our temporal lobe, and in back, we have our occipital lobe. Now, the nice thing about the lobes of the brain is that they follow uh, the bone markings and the cranial bones that we just learned in our last unit. Now, if we focus on some of our major depressions, we have our major central sulcus. Again, it's the delineation, the separation between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. This will also delineate our primary motor section of our cortex, which is our pre-central gyrus. We have our post-central gyrus behind that central sulcus, post-central gyrus. That's going to be our primary somatosensory integration. This big slit that separates the left and right hemispheres is going to be our median longitudinal fissure. Again, it's not a sulcus because it's a lot deeper. This is going to be where we find one of our major sinuses, our superior si sagittal sinus, as well as one of our extensions of our dura mater, uh, known as the Fox cerebri. So now that we have some of the basic anatomy covered, uh, we're going to split this open in half to identify some of these major structures. Now, <coughs> this back little portion that we see is the cerebellum. So again, cerebrum, the largest portion of the brain, cerebellum, some of the smaller portions. When we get to our mid-sagittal cut, we'll stay with this plastic model first, and then we'll deal with this hard plastic one. We have our pons, our medulla oblongata below it. We have this nice corpus callosum. Now again, this is going to integrate and it's going to connect the left and right hemispheres of the brain. We have our fornix. Now we have our diencephalon. Our diencephalon is going to be comprised of three parts, right? We have our thalamus, which is going to be our centralized local parts, so about the size of two eggs in both hemispheres of the brain. Above it is going to be our epithalamus, and we can see our epithalamus better on this model, so we'll get to that. And continuous with the epithalamus is going to be our pineal gland. Below the thalamus is going to be our hypothalamus, our mammary bodies, mammillary bodies underneath this. And then if we had, again, this model has a good view of it, but off of here would be our infundibulum with our pituitary gland that would be sitting within that cella tersica. Okay, the white structure that we see here, so separating white matter from gray matter, is our arbor vitae, so tree of life. This is within the cere cerebellum. The folia, or leaves, makes up the gray matter. Okay. Now we could go to the spaces of the brain, and this is probably one of the hardest parts of this model, is because they are spaces, so they're interpretive. It's not something that we could physically point to and say, this is the corpus callosum, this is the fornix. Um, so what we do is we say the tent that is formed when we pull the cerebellum down a little bit is our fourth ventricle. The aqueduct, so the canal that connects the fourth ventricle to where the region over both halves of the thalamus would be our third ventricle. And this little membrane right here, this clear membrane, is the septum pellucidum. If we had the ability to pop this, we could get into the lateral ventricle that would be underneath and filling on the sides, the anterior aspect of uh, the septum pellucidum. Okay, so let's go to this model because I do like some of the structures here a little bit better. 
So again, just to cover what we have in general, and again, mid-sagittal cut of our cerebrum, our cerebellum, um, some major structures that we have, fornix, that clear membrane that separates those lateral ventricle septum pellucidum, corpus callosum. Here's our nice epithalamus connected to our pineal gland. We have our hypothalamus with our infundibulum and our pituitary sitting nicely within that cell of the sphenoid bone. We have our pons, our medulla oblongata. Here's a beautiful representation of that tent for the fourth ventricle cerebral aqueduct to the space that leads to the third ventricle. Now this is an interesting note. See this highly vascularized structure? These are those ependymal cells that form the choroid plexus. So everywhere we have a ventricle, above the third, within the laterals, above the fourth, we would find this, these ependymal cells, these choroid plexus that would be making uh, CSF to the tune of about 500 mils a day. Now these blue structures you see, are going to be our, our sinuses. This is a superior sagittal sinus. Our inferior sagittal sinus, if it was on this model, would be right here. This will be our rectus sinus. Okay, so it's another sinus that's going to help. Uh, we would have extensions off the arachnoid mater. These little indentations would be arachnoid villi that would allow for CSF to push one-way valve due to pressure of making more CSF or cerebral spinal fluid would push that used CSF back into circulation, <clears throat> which would move back uh, to the heart, which would eventually get it, make its way back to the lungs to get that blood reoxygenated and delivered back to the, cor to the choroid plexuses uh, within those hollow spaces of the brain. Another structure we're going to talk about right here is within the, within the uh, midbrain. This is our corpora quadrigemina. So four bodies. Above is our superior colliculi, and below, <clears throat> excuse me, would be our inferior colliculi. So we have two on each side. That gives us a total of four. Two superior colliculi, two inferior colliculi to give us our corpora quadrigemina. Okay. And again here, we have our mammillary body. And that's pretty much our structures of the brain that we can see with this model. Oh, one last thing to look at, again, this model doesn't show, but if we had a nice extension of the dura mater right here that would cover and slice into this medium longitudinal fissure, that would extend right about in through here, um, that connective tissue, that extension would be called the Fox uh, cerebri. Okay, very good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Good luck.